Today we're talking about lighting a whole entire list. No. Today we're going to be talking about how to light a room using this. I'm going to let you know whether or not it actually was beneficial to me or was it not worth the struggle. So let's get into Lightroom right now. I'm going to show you how I did this. Here is our ambient shot. This is a pretty cool room here. We got a nice prop here with this motorcycle sitting in here. No, this is not a garage with a couch in it. This is, uh, looks like a little seating area. And normally, you know me, if you've watched any of my other tutorials, I'm all about shutting all the lights off in the house, except for when there is a unique situation or if the lights actually add to the potential sale of the home and in this case I was okay with leaving them on even if they were even though they were super tungsten -y color so if you can see this right here on these arches these orange lights I thought why not I mean it show it it attracts you to that and that's why I decided to leave them on same with this overhead light actually normally I wouldn't have this light on at all because it just causes more problems than it needs and but in this situation, I said, why not? Let's just overpower it with flash anyway. So here is the flash above the camera. And how I did this was I just held the flash up and bounced the flash into the room. So that's how I did this shot. So I used this uh, reflector on every single shot. And it did. It lit it pretty well. All these images have had my preset on them. If I just reset this... And then I go up to 9 to 18 millimeter initial. But actually, I think I paste it in, yeah, for corrections there. So, yeah, that's what that looks like. And then this is our first bounce shot. Not bad. Um, it actually worked out well because of these beams here. And the other thing that I, I was actually... I liked about using the reflector is if you notice we don't have a lot of blooming going on on the ceiling all that light is hitting the reflector and bouncing into the room same with our other shot here the other side so a lot of times what you'll have is when you're doing your composites when you're doing like a left and right composite hitting the ceiling especially with the 8600 you're gonna get a big bloom around that ceiling whereas if you're not far enough away from your other uh, flash pop that they'll overlap where you always got to be mindful of that because then when you go to blend them blend one of them out of there for your uh for your composite that you're always left with like a strip in the middle where that those hot that hot spot on the ceiling they overlap but with using the reflector i didn't have that issue real quick before we edit these uh i just wanted to show you another example here um see that there's a hot spot right here but how it feathers off and it's not so strong on that ceiling if we look at this other side so blending these two together was really easy I mean look at how almost even light on the ceiling from just this shot right here so just something to keep in mind alright so let's do this let's go back to our main image here let's highlight our ambient shot I'm gonna hold down shift or I'm sorry I'm gonna hold down command that allows me to select each one of these and I put five stars around the ones that I needed. So I'm going to do my left and right composite, the flash above the camera going into the room, and then our ambient layer. Let's right-click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. All right, so now that we have all the layers loaded into Photoshop, I'm just going to hold down Shift, click the bottom one to select them all, come up here to Edit, Auto Align Layers, just in case they shifted a little bit. Make sure Auto is selected, hit OK. And it did. It was just a little bit out of alignment. That'll help when we go to start blending these. Now, how I was able to do this, and it actually worked pretty smoothly, uh, I have that strap for the Godox 8600, so I can let go of it. It'll just hang there around my neck. And I also have a, a cell phone strap uh, so I can put my cell phone around my neck. And that's what I'm uh, using an app from my Olympus camera, basically giving, my, giving me my camera controls right from my phone. So what I had to do was set my... Uh, camera to a four second timer so I would hit the trigger grab the reflector hold it up grab the 8600 and hold it there and about the time that I did that I had about two seconds and then it did its flash pop so it actually wasn't that bad so let me show you that image right there that's what I had to do oops uh, I'm not gonna be able to zoom in can I yeah so you can see that strap that I have looped around holding the 8600 and I also have a little belay clip that I keep the 
um, reflector in in case I don't need it for every shot at least I have it on me if I need it so with that uh, being said I like that idea so let's do this we start with all our layers we're gonna toggle off these two so we're back to this one let's come down here to the layer mask command I to invert and I'm gonna show you this I love using that gradient tool so basically we can pull from anywhere in front of the hot spot on the ceiling so we can just click and drag somewhere right to there giving us a nice smooth even blend now I almost like this by itself if we take this one and turn it on turn this one to lighten mode and we toggle that on and off that actually does brighten it up a little bit um, but I want to drop that uh, opacity of that flash above the camera to about 50% all right, and then we can toggle on our ambient layer. And for this situation, I am going to try luminosity mode. A lot of times I don't like it because it discolors things. But look, at it pulls the orange out of those uh, lights. I like that. Well, let's do it. Let's leave it. All right, let's do a layer mask. Command I to invert. Let's take our brush tool. I'm in a flow of, I like to go 5% just to feather in that ambient let's see if we can blend out some of these unwanted shadows here I want to watch that hardwood floor that we don't put too much glare to it but look at that there's not a whole lot of shadows my window poles maybe could a little could have been a little bit stronger and I say window poles because I don't do window poles I might actually start doing window poles um, it's just one extra shot I never never do them and just because a lot of times my flat one of my one of my flash layers is good enough for the window view but I'm thinking I might want to start implementing window pulls so look at that I'm bringing back in some of that ambient that looks really good to me I like that so we can right click down here in the bottom we're gonna come to flatten image and I'm gonna command s to save it let's bring it back into Lightroom I'm gonna do my interior final bump and that looks pretty good to me the other thing I want to show you guys is I'm just going to right click and I'm going to go into uh, edit in Luminar AI. Now I have both Luminar AI and Luminar Neo and if you go to my channel and look for uh, Luminar Neo tutorial I have one of those uh, already out there and just go through everything that you're able to do. I got Luminar AI first and the kind of the big difference between the two is that you can create layer masks with Luminar Neo which you can't with Luminar AI. There's some things that I like using Luminar AI for better than Luminar Neo, but I'll save that for a different tutorial. But check this out. I've created a template, but I want to show you this. I wish Lightroom had the ability to do what Accent does with Luminar AI. And if anybody can help me out with this, I'd greatly appreciate it. Please leave me a comment below. But look what Accent does. I'm just going to click on that. It's almost like it does like a boost in contrast, but it does a, it brightens it up too. I can't figure it out. Because it doesn't really do a contrast boost because it doesn't completely destroy your highlights. I just like the way that it looks. And if I toggle this on and off, look at it. It just adds an extra little boost to it but I am gonna bring that all the way back down I'm gonna come up to my templates and I'm gonna go interior bump template watch what that does look at that so I do I play with the sharpness a little bit but if I just move this all the way down look it almost looks hazy until I do my bump on there I think that looks amazing so you be the judge let me know let me know if there's any way I can get that same look in Lightroom because if I can, I won't have to go into Luminar every time and back out because, you know, you're going from Lightroom to Photoshop, Luminar AI. Because you can access Luminar AI or any of the Luminar apps right from Photoshop, which is nice. So this is the one I would consider deliverable, and I would just flag it and move on. I'm going to do one more for you guys. Let's go to that other example that I showed you right here. And I'm going to paste my settings in from the other room. And it looks like we got a lot of blue cast coming in. But again, we're going to see if uh, luminosity mode works for this one. This is that flash above the, above the camera, which was a bounce into the room, which it does. It does a really nice job. Especially on this 
on this house. I like that. Let's copy these settings. I'm just copying from and let's see what that does. That looks good there. See, it's not really uh, doing a huge bloom on the ceiling. Let's edit this one really quick for you. Edit and open as layers in Photoshop. This house was dark. It had dark floors, you know, fairly dark walls, the beams. So looking back, I'm glad I had the reflector. I'm glad I decided to use it for this particular shoot because it softened that light, it feathered it enough. If it was white walls, you know, or gray walls or whatever, and white seal, you know, throughout, and a lot of natural light, I probably wouldn't need the reflector. Although I'm still kind of testing the waters with it, I'm, I actually really like it as far as the results go. So let's toggle the first two, get to our composite. Let's do a layer mask, command I to invert. I'm kind of moving quickly because you already saw me do the first one. Click and drag like that. That blended a little bit there. We're gonna bring this one into view now and turn that to light and mode. That's one of my favorite new techniques there to just to go light and mode. Cause look, I'm toggling it on and off. It's taking the brightest part of that image and using that and toggling that one. Sometimes you get too much when you have that much light, you don't need it. But let's toggle on our ambient layer. Let's see what luminosity mode does in this situation. It does, it cleans it up pretty nicely. A lot of times it just, I found that luminosity mode just doesn't work in a lot of situations. I don't know if it's the type of homes I shoot a lot of, like with dark cabinets or dark, you know, um, furniture, things like that, but it just seems to cause a lot of discoloration. And maybe it's because I don't have enough light. I have heard that, like in your shadowed areas, it can cause orange in the shadows. But look, it's not in this situation, which is really interesting to me. Let's feather this opacity um, of the uh, ambient layer to 50%. We can do a layer mask, but don't invert it. And when you do that, that just means we're going to be able to paint back in the flash underneath. I like that. We should have lit this little doorway here. I'm not crazy about that, where you can see boots and things. Don't judge me on that. But, hey... Let's uh, flatten this image and command S to save it. It's a TIFF file. It's back in. Let's do our interior final bump. Bring that exposure down. Let's just see what happens when we bring it into, uh, I'm going to show you how fast it is. Edit in Luminar AI. And I'm just going to do my quick little preset. We'll see how that looks on this one. So we got to go to my templates, interior bump, boom, nice. Let's just see the difference to that, to that. Very clean. Definitely adds a nice punch to it. Is it too much? I don't know. I'm still playing around with that whole, uh, whole look. But I do, I like it. Part of me likes it. Let's see, watch it. It's going to change here once it loads. Boom. I like that. All right, well, there you go. That's how to light a room using a reflector. You be the judge whether or not you think it's going to be, uh, you're going to have better results with it. Again, what I suggest is just getting one of these and practicing. Practice in your own house. Um, I'm still undecided. I am going to start taking it on every listing because I like the fact that it's giving me nice, soft light throughout, just doing the bounce and bouncing that flash back into the room. I find that... Uh, I like that. I like soft light. I, th I like it better than doing an umbrella. It's easier because when you want to move around to the next room, you just tuck it under your arm and go. And then it just un you know, unfolds super easy and super convenient. So, again, leave me a comment below if you have any questions or concerns or any helpful tips for us out here on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button. Tutorials are coming out all the time. Thanks for watching.